Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. It's another ladder match between Obfuscation, that's Bladir, and Thomas Hyatt. Playing under the name Kafseel. So soon Bladir will be playing the ladder arena versus Torin, a best of seven. Maybe by the time this, well, it should be finished by the time this video comes out, I would say. Torin apparently needs some time to uh, prepare. It is a best of seven where you get to uh, choose the maps. If you have the lower rating at the start, well, let's, let's go back a step. Top two rated active ladder players. That means you need 10 wins within the time period. Top two rated players play a best of seven. The lower rated player of the two gets to choose the first map. After that, the uh, loser of the previous map gets to choose the next one. So, you will get to choose maps uh, unless you just body your opponent 4-0. But I don't think that's likely to happen. Uh, so you will be choosing maps, so... You can definitely do some preparation. Prepare some builds for a couple maps and... Uh, give yourself a better chance, so apparently that's what Torn's doing. It seems like a lot of people are very confident in Bloodir for the best of seven. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess uh, it's reasonable Bloodir's the favorite, but people seem very confident that he's going to win it. We'll see. We'll see. Could be right. Bloodir is definitely a good player and he's been playing a fair bit recently. Let's head back to this game though. Thomas has gone second land. He's going third air. Risky on such a map. But his opponent is Bladir, a man in the past not known for making bombers. And would you look at that? No bomber. So right off the bat, I think that's a nice start for Thomas. And one problem is he has run out of mass. It is there. You can make three factories without stalling mass in this map. I'm not sure exactly what the build is to do it but it's kind of tricky because you run out of mass I know some people get uh, get a, usually go for a naval factory if they go for very quick factories they might build one off the shore here with the ACU Thomas has already five tanks at three minutes it's that's a lot of tanks this early on his expansion you can see is not so speedy so you look at all these mexes don't have a uh, don't have engineers heading towards them. He still hasn't finished his air factory, so he still is in danger of a bomber coming out of this factory. And yeah, you can see as soon as Blood Air scouts, he also sends the Inti. And now he's gonna have two Inties. He's gonna block production from the factory of Thomas. And this bomber could be getting quite a few kills this this engineer obviously very vulnerable can't really can't be protected by anti air really uh this and then there's two more engineers at the front that would also be targets the difficulty for bladir is he has one tank <laughs> a single tank and already thomas has seven he's going to get this first raid here Probably shouldn't have sent all the tanks to the bottom side. Maybe he should have... Could have probably ran through middle immediately. Oh, no, no, no. He needs a micro here. Well. Yeah, he's going to follow that uh, that engineer. And he's really lacking on power now. That's a big problem. This factory here was a mistake. This is where his... This is, uh, should have been PGENs instead of factory here probably and here comes the bomber what's it killed though it looks like it missed nice dodge from Thomas only a single bomb comes out there as well at the end and that bomber failed miserably 
it was just too slow. Now Blitter could easily go for another bomber though, however. He could also go for a jester. Could go for a transport. He has the air control. Needs to make use of it. A really quick drop, perhaps first dropping Thomas's side would be nice. Making a gesture would be nice. Um, right now he's focused on other things, getting his land production up. It's a pretty nice defense here, and somehow this engineer has not been raided. He's actually taken damage. It's low HP, but Thomas didn't get the kill here, and that's definitely a kill Thomas should have got there, for sure. Nice defense from Ladir. And he really hasn't taken much damage from the land early on, which is very surprising. And now it looks like he has a pretty even number of units. Thomas is forced to pause air, so he's running out of power. This map is a power stall map because, yeah, look at that. Already 25 mass extractors. So all your power goes into building those things. They're not cheap. Not cheap at all. In terms of power, very cheap in mass. So you can see it's like half the T1 P gen to build that. So it's like building like 12 power generators, I guess. Which is a lot. <laughs> I mean, he only has 17. So all the energy has gone into uh, onto the mixes, and then he needs a lot of power to uh, use the mass as well. So he's struggling with that. But it looks like he has much better expansion. Let's see, right. So we have tw wow, 29 mexes. See that? He already got, he just got four more mexes in that time. Bladir. Well, 27. He's very close. Two naval factories for Bladir. Also, Bladir taking out the middle. There's a couple of mexes here. Which are hard to hold on to. Obviously, so close to the uh, opponent. And Bladir takes them out. We have no naval factory. No naval factory for Thomas. Wow. Okay. And already T2 air for Thomas. Okay. Okay. Interesting. He's had air pulse all that time and now he actually managed to get enough power together to make T2 air. He's making tor bombers to try and kill the units in the water. There are so many mass extractors in the water that it makes it really risky to not have any navy. He's certainly saving some mass on that. But is it going to pay off? I mean, it seems very risky. Now Bladir grabbing the plateaus on his side at about the time most people do. In around this time, anyway, you can see the Medusa under this uh, under this cliff can take out the units and buildings up on the on the top there. So Thomas going for the gun. He has gun T two air T one land, no navy. He's got to do some serious damage on land and. This landmass is small. It's it's quite small. You will see bases get run over in on this map because the travel time is just not that long. Bladir hasn't added any more navy. Doesn't need to, but he can't really do much damage here. You can see he gets gets towards the base, and these torp bombers are taking him out before he can do anything. To uh, usually, you'll attack the uh, hydrocarbon, the mexes power generators here that are next to the water all those are in danger but they're being defended and oh here comes the inties and there's very few interceptors for for Thomas not that huge a number for Bladir either though now you can see adding a lot more engineers onto the factory he knows there's T2 air around he has to increase his air production and that's what he's doing.
We have T2 land for Bladir. I don't see any support factories coming, but look at the lack of units for Bladir is really... That's so few units. Almost at 10 minutes and he has 20 tanks and less than 10. Look at this 60, 60 tanks, 20 Zooies and a gun commander and Thomas is coming towards the base. Somehow, with almost no tanks, he still gets a really nice fight here against these Thams, but now that the ACU has arrived, it's going to become a pretty nasty fight for him, actually, as he loses all his units and feeds veterancy. <laughs> but they're trying to drop the plateau here to take that. It's a nice move. But he has big fish to fry. T2PDs have to go up in the base. Nice positioning here behind the factory. The, so the factory is going to soak damage instead of the uh, T2PDs. For a bigger PD you need a, a bigger wall and that's what this factory is. Only a Cybern wall though so. Not as much HP. This commander is walking into now 3 T2PDs and his health is dropping. I think the Zooies need to be taken out quickly because they're going to do so much damage. The AC is dropping, but if he gets a vet back, oh, huge overcharge, killing the T2PDs, or, well, the T2 engineers. Now the T2PDs also going down. All these Zooies should have been taken out by the T2PDs, because they're putting out so much damage. Watch this disappear. And Thomas is really threatening to run over this base. Some Rhinos come out. They're going to get overcharged, but they're doing decent damage before they go down. Oh, gunships now over the base as well, attacking the T2 power generator. Finally, some damage done by the Navy. But really not that much. This base is under such a huge attack. Thomas is now below 500 HP, still getting pinged by a T2 PD. But there is only one at the minute. Oh, he's down to 3000 HP. Needs to get another vet level. Oh, he's really close to it. There he gets it. 6,000 HP again. And he's just streaming his T1 tanks into the base. But he needs he, need, he needs to add more factories. He needs to get some... Could uh, add more factories along here. Just spam a lot of factories. Get some tanks out. More uh, artillery. Oh, and Natha coming in to finish off the T2 pigeon. Finally... The hot, the uh, the T2 land factory would be another good option. Three or four Nothas would easily, easily take that out. I think the Nothas are a good option for him. Doing well. He could also you can pop this in one shot with the with a T2 bomber. No damage done on the left side. He's just going for the base. There's a lot of mexes over here that aren't defended too much that maybe he could be taking out. But look at this. Bloodier still managing to hold on. This PD, this PD killing so much stuff. But without the T2 PJ, let's see how he's doing. Well, he still has... Oh, here comes the, the ACU coming back towards the base. And maybe that's going to help him hold this gun com. Another T2PD has gone up. And you can see they're he's being forced to build them further back. But now with two of them up, one of the, look at this one, 1,200 damage. 1,200 mass killed. The Nota can't even kill it. And the T1 bomber goes down as well. And I think that's thanks to the region it's got. That it's still alive, that vet level. Subs moving around. Oh, that's a nice uh, torpedo launcher. Has killed three mexes there. Now more factories going up at the front, but it might already be too late. The T2P Pigeon is being rebuilt. There's three T2PDs, another one on the way. There's a few tanks. There's really not that many units for Thomas anymore. And the Nata is attacking a frigate and missing. And Thomas hasn't even taken his uh, 
It's tough expansion. I think these PDs are gonna hold for now. And now, oh, the gun commander is coming next. And I think he can hold on long enough to get that gun finished. And then it's not going to be possible most likely to get through this base. Bladir holding on. Just about. And now the navy is going to be worth so much. You can see very few water mixes for Thomas. He has like three, four, five. This this sub has been trying to kill this this uh, mix for the longest time. Can't get through the cliff though. <laughs> Not the best targeting. The gun finishes for Bloodier just as Thomas starts another push towards the base. Now there's four T2PDs up. There's no way. There's just no way that he can get through here. And it looks like Bloodier is also winning air. Max is all these Rapigians have all gone down. The Hydra is going to go down shortly. Even getting raided at the front. And now Bloodier pushing back with his own gun commander. He does still have just the same HP as this, uh, this commander. <laughs> Even though he's in the yellow. Still has more HP than, than uh, Bloodier's comp. So Bladir needs to be a bit careful. He doesn't stray too far from his PDs. But as it is, it looks pretty rough for Thomas. I think he... Maybe he can get a snipe off on this commander. But he needs to win back air control. He needs more... More inties. But right now he's making Nothas. And T1 bombers. And I think Bloodier scooped a lot of this mass. He still is scooping a lot of this mass. No engineers on the front from Thomas that I can see except this one. A lot of factories trying to going up on the front. But they're mostly building Zooey's. This one making some engineers. I'm gonna try and get some reclaim. There are some T2 wrecks to grab. That would be nice. And maybe some there's some uh, T2 air wrecks as well. Another air fight. Oh, Torp Bomber's getting killed over Thomas's base. But now maybe he is going to do some damage on the top, finally. As he sends his reinforcements there. There's rhinos coming after his commander. Those rhinos are not going to do very well. Look at this full vet. Over 8,000 mass killed by this commander. And the rhinos are getting destroyed. Nearly 9,000 damage now. As Bloodier sends his ACU to the top. You see how confident he is now. He has... Uh, three support factories pumping out rhinos. And they're just going to clean everything. Look at this band of rhinos here. They can just run through the whole way through. Kill everything on the bottom side now. And the ACU still... Just can't really push in. Thanks to these T2PDs. And there's more of them coming up. And that is the main danger. No, run. Run away from this commander. Damn. What a waste of rhinos. This ACU is farming so hard. On the other side, looks like this ACU is here just in time. To catch most of the Thams and the Zooey's. Oh my god, there's gestures. It's going to take three gestures a long time to take out a commander like this. But Thomas can't really hide in the water. Because he has no navy whatsoever. Oh, look at that guy. He's just a little brain dead, this sub. What a waste of time. That poor sub. A lot of T2PDs now at the front of the base. Thomas is chilling in the water. Oh, he's building anti-airs. That's, that's like a... That doesn't seem like a, 
a move that's gonna win the game. Bl oh, Blitter taking the top plateaus as well, finally. Thomas just never managed to do it. I mean, I don't think he could even fly a transport out of here because of all the cyber frigates would probably damage it so much. They would definitely spot it with their big radar, but they might even kill those uh, transports uh, if he tried to drop there. And now look at this. Let's take a look. 19 rhinos. Thomas doesn't even have T2 land. Just T1 land. And a gun commander. I mean, that is a beastly gun commander, but I think he's just run out of steam now. Bladir weathered the storm. Just about. Maybe not the best use of the rhinos. <laughs> just running directly into range of all of these uh, these tanks. Probably not the best use of the rhinos. But there's reinforcements and uh, I think he's going to mop all this up pretty quickly. Thomas has some nice reclaim here but I don't think that's doesn't look like it's going to be enough. This this has taken damage so I, pre I presume frigates can actually hit this uh, this T2 air factory. Oh, Bloodier even ecoing. I didn't even see these. I don't know when he made those. Four T2 Max at the back, two over here. I mean, kind of weird he doesn't make them in the water. Might be safer, considering, yeah, now he's making some in the water. Considering there's no navy for Thomas still. And now, yeah, he truly has run out of steam. There's nothing to be done with all these rhinos around. T2 saved Bloodir there saved him big time he was able to get up a couple of pds a few pds he lost some but uh yeah if he just had t1 if he just had t1 stuff i think he would have been in a really bad spot without t2 pds blood Ear does not hold that i don't think sure he'd have more t1 land but uh more t1 land if he didn't go t2 but I think it, it don't think it would have worked. You need those TTPDs to hold off a commander like this. I mean, see how he beat the commander. He didn't really beat the commander at all. <laughs> the commander killed himself. Beat the commander by uh, just keeping him at arm's length, not letting him get the whole way in. Maybe, maybe uh, not the snipe on the HQ. Maybe that would have done it. Perhaps. Uh, maybe also just some just more T1 land production. I think he maybe Thomas could have had more production at that point when he was trying early on to push this base. But overall, I thought he was he was close to running this over, real close. But Blitter held on, and uh, yeah, well played, well played. He showed the value of the tech. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Check out the ladder arena. I might uh, stream that uh, if I am on at the same time as it's happening. We shall see. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in very soon for another cast.